you know, when I was in Virginia, after I left Virginia where I was, I went to Greece for a year. And after that, I debated on getting out, talked to a couple people, I ended up staying in, going to Spain. Um, when I went to Spain, I was there for, for I think it was a little over two years. I deployed there to um, uh, Afghanistan. And so in Afghanistan, um, actually, I'm sorry, I went to Kuwait from there. <laughs> Yeah, went to Kuwait. Kuwait a minute. Kuwait a minute, but it was it was like I was there for a long time. So like, yeah, I was in Kuwait for a while, while during my tour in Spain. After I left there, that's when I went to be an instructor. Um, you know, so we were doing duty station <coughs> to duty station, right? I'm instructor at Lackland for a long time at the dog center. Then I'm going, you know, down to South Texas, down You're to still Corpus Christi. Five at this time? No, oh, I'm eighty six in Spain. So I'm eighty six in Spain, MA one, and then I went to instructor school. And during that time, there was a competition for the military working dogs. And I got, uh, basically told I was going to do it. Um, they're like, Nick, you need to take Regina and do it. And she's like, on my arm right here. And, your uh, girlfriend? yeah, my dog. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I have a girlfriend named Saber. <laughs> it's my female dog. <laughs> she's my, she's my daughter, my little girl, man. Uh, she's my love of my life. Yeah. You know what you said? Yeah. Quinn? But, uh, yeah. so bench after that, I got recognized. I did this competition. I finished pretty decently in the competition of like, I think it was like 50 dog handlers all over the nation. Um, we finished in the top when, I, well, then it would have finished first in the bike part, but had one little minor hiccup, which was a major hiccup to a dog, uh, thing, but it was just missed one little search thing. And it cost us from first to fourth, you know, so we finished pretty high and out of every dog, every dog team that came to do the competition. And that's when I got nominated to be, go to kennel master school. And when I went that, then I went to kennel master school, but at, even as a kennel master, you still can be a trainer. You have to have that NEC. It's another additional school on top of that job career field. Um, so I became a trainer in Italy, like you said, um, over, um, you know, nine, I think it's like nine installations and, uh, four continents. So, um, you know, we're, we're in charge of your ass was your Africa, Southwest Asia, you know, and we have Djibouti. So we have Africa. So we have four, um, four continents covered there. So I just travel how many around. Dogs, how many dogs is it that? It just like? depends, man. Like Bahrain has a lot of dogs, you know, 20 something dogs. Some other kennels like in Italy have like five dogs, you know, so Greece is different than, um, you know, you know, Greece is different than Italy. Italy's different than Bahrain. Siganella is different. So we all these command. All these depends on the mission, right? How many dogs you need. And so I was a trainer for all those dogs. Uh, as far as like the regional trainer, they reported all their reports to me. I go visit every quarter, and uh, or every six months maybe because it's hard every quarter, but every six months or at least once a year to do a, a assessment on their kennel. And uh, then I went to Virginia um, to be a. Re- so I was a regional trainer in Italy, and then the one guy, the guy, my buddy was retiring, so they moved him out of the regional kennel master, and I became the regional kennel master as an MA1, as an E6, which is, I think, uh, at, there has only been one other E6 has been a regional kennel master ever, uh, as far as I can, as far as I know, you know. So usually it's a chief, usually it's a chief doing that, that or higher doing that job. Um, but uh, after that, I went to Virginia, and, and I was a regional trainer there, and over all of the East Coast. So pretty much. How does that rank structure work? You know how, like in most, uh, in most like MOSs or whatever, you you have you know your your platoon, your platoon sergeant, your you know your your um, your officers. You, Come, you on, you got your, yeah, yeah, Come on, Marine. Yeah, yeah. Come on, Marine. Spit it out. It's uh, you got you got your your uh, your staff NCOs. You got this. You know, like then you got your uh, your XOs and you got your COs. You know. Is that the same way in in the dog handling world in the military? Did you have somebody like a, a ranking officer in the dog department? Well, what, we all in security, so we all fall under a certain thing, right? When you're on the installation, so we report to the security officer. Everyone does it, not I mean not directly, right? Yeah. But you have a chief, and then the chief reports to. The dit devo, whatever, bash, whoever it is. Yeah, but he's not necessarily a, a, a dog guy, right? Well, the kennel, they're not. No, no. they're not. The kennel master is in, is really over. In, it's overly it. in charge you, of, right? You're done, it's, there's no one else. Well, the kennel master, yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, at a kennel, I mean, I was never really even at a kennel. I was at a region. I went from region. A lot of people were like, oh, I went straight to region, didn't run a kennel. I was like, well, I didn't have to. I didn't, wasn't. I went to region. And I think they mad because I skipped a level and didn't go to run a kennel. I ran a region instead, so they were kind of pissed off. Like, why is, why is Webster get to go run a region? He ain't even been a kennel master. I said, well, I mean, maybe I'm, maybe they want me to run an entire region. Maybe one kennel ain't enough for me. I don't know. Like, <laughs> like why are you hating? I didn't, like, like say, no, don't make me a, a kennel master at an installation. I was, but they offered me a billet. 
So whatever, I don't care. Um, <coughs> yeah, people get butt hurt all the time. Can't make everybody happy. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> but anyways, so um, but as far as this, I do know because I ran a region, so I know how it works. So the kennel master reports to the security officer, and they just basically you're the you're the SME, you're the subject matter matter expert. So they take you what you're saying with you know as you know, as the word, as the gospel, right? Yeah. Out that, on missions, did uh, did you ever have anybody try to overrun your say, your your word on on a mission or something like a oh, my word? Yeah, hell no. Anybody gonna talk shit to me? <laughs> nah, I'm, uh, I'm like I'm an E five. What you gonna do about <laughs> yeah. it? And I got a dog now. Um, no, like it's funny because a lot of guys when you you know you know what you're talking. If you do know what you're talking about, you have no problem talking about what you you know the yeah. subject. Well. If you're a junior and you really are unsure, you may trip up and do whatever someone tells you to do yeah. because you don't want to get in trouble or whatever. But being the SME out there, you stick to your guns, you, man. You you were you're out there to protect the safety of your dog and the well being of your dog above above everything else. And uh, you know, an order just because someone orders you to do something, that doesn't mean you have to do it. It's got to be lawful. It's got to make sense. And if it's, it comes on the thing with safety of your dog, um, then just say I'm not doing that. Respectfully, and that's what I did. I come across a general when I'm at the base. Hey, I need you to sweep these vehicles. My dog been working for 45 minutes or however long. It doesn't matter how long he's been working. He was tired. It was hot outside. I laid him down. Water. He's resting in the shade. Got water. Hey, you just sweep these other vehicles. Or da, da, da. I was like, no, sir. <laughs> Maybe a little sarcastic, you know. I was like, I, I was like, I probably didn't say it like that. I'm just like yeah. making it sound good, right? Now, but, now, I, now you oh, look yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. Shit's changed. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right. Now I was like, I ain't doing that shit. Um, <laughs> but uh, he was like, I need to sweep those vehicles. He kind of walked over. I said, my dog's taking. A, I probably said, you know, my dog's taking a break, so he's tired. He's like, listen, I need you to sweep these vehicles now. Get it done. We got blah 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 coming in. You need to make sure it's bomb free, clear, and everything. I said, he's taking a break. I'm, I'm not doing it, you know. And and the thing is, is that he tried to get up, like, tried to get all big chested and tough. He's like, you know who I am? I run the, I don't even know what he said. It doesn't matter. He was like, because I forgot. It went in like, in one way or not the fucking other. Because I already knew what I was going to say after that, you know. So he was just kind of like, what? You hear what I said? You know, trying to bark orders. And that's the whole thing is like having a set of, having a, having a set, you know, of cojones is like, is important in life. Because. I told that guy, guy no, he's a two star general or whatever it was. I was an E five, but the thing is, what's more important is my safety and my dog. And you can't, they can't win that because if I say my dog's tired and they ain't doing it, I ain't doing it. Yeah. What are you gonna go back and say? Hey, that E five wouldn't search with his dog. He said he was tired. If I was in charge of that dude, I'd be like, well, his dog's was tired. he? Well, was he? <laughs> was he tired? Well, I don't and he'd be know like, well, I, he was laying down drinking water. <laughs> the dog uh, looked at me and went, well, shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my dog was like this, uh, but yeah, I mean, so you know, you you got to stand up for what's you know, you know what's right, and a lot of people don't because they kind of conform and yeah. go with the flow because they don't want to cause no uh, friction. Yeah. Or, do, or do you have any racist dogs? Zero. Zero. They, they all like dog food. <laughs> Dan. Okay, yeah, quick question for you, Nick. Um, are you, you talked about one of your de deployments was to uh, Greece, and you said you stayed mm -hmm. in Greece for basically a, a year? That was one of my duty stations. Duty stations. Yeah, I was actually stationed there for a year. Yeah. As opposed to a deployment is where you're stationed so somewhere, and then you get deployed there. You, were you working with the dogs at that point in time? Yeah, I was a dog handler you there. Work, I was assigned. Working with the dogs at that time? Yeah, I was assigned a dog when I got to Greece. I was a dog handler. Yeah. So I was, after I left Virginia, I went to Greece as a dog handler, picked up a new dog. But we just call it like that's my next duty station because I was stationed there for a year. And I guess we call deployments like, like Iraq, Afghanistan, Kuwait, Syria. Those are deployments. But yeah, I was actually stationed. I actually lived there for a year on the coast of um, the island of Crete in wow. Hanya. Did you get to go around and tour it and check out all the old? Well, did you ever make? <laughs> Who's first? Go ahead, Mr. Shepard. Please, sir. Okay, well, that's kind of what I was getting towards. Sir. Did you get a chance to actually do a tour, like go down and see like the Parthenon or things of that nature? What uh, some of the, you know, Rome is full of history. So uh, some of the greatest fights in the world took place in the Colosseum. So yeah, gladiators. Yeah, I actually been to both. Uh, went to uh, like far as like being the Parthenon and going to Rome. I saw 
I've been to Rome, been to the Coliseum. But, uh, yeah, in Greece, I got to go to – I saw the Parthenon. I got to say all the, the ruins. I went to Athens and done everything to do in Athens. Um, went to Balos and Granvusa Island, which is probably the bluest water I've ever seen in my entire life. There's a, sump, there's a ship out there that sunk, and it was kind of cool. Um, so I traveled a lot, uh, you know, Star Beach, Mykono, you know, different places. I traveled all around Greece. It was awesome. If I was to go back to somewhere to, like, vacation because I'd see it again, probably be Greece. For sure. So when you're training dogs and you go to a station where they have dogs that they've been trained by a, a Greek guy or an Italian guy, mm-hmm. no, it doesn't happen like that? No, nah, it's a U.S. dogs. It's a military working dog program. We got, we don't be like, yo, you got to start speaking Greek now. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, when in Rome, man. No, no, no. They don't have – you don't yes. – <laughs> yeah, we don't have. It. Yeah, it's a, it's funny because it's a foreign base, but it's a it's it, a lot of Greek people, a lot of Greeks work there and stuff. But the dog work, the U.S. forces run the base, and so the dogs get all trained in one language. It's not like you got to go introduce yourself to the dog. Uh, Parle italiano. <laughs> it's like, huh? you know. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When I show up, I was like, don't they don't los perros, you know? Uh, but um, no, it's they're all trained at Black Air Force Base. So it's all our dogs and stuff. So we have to keep a strict program is what we're doing. It's not a, it ain't no day by day program. We have books and protocols and well, you order dogs and get dogs and everyone's tracking everything. It's a system. So it's, yeah, it's in depth for sure. You hungry? What is that? Jimmy Chong got a big one. Grab it, man. It's a burrito, man. It's a burrito. Not right now. I don't know. Well, so he's warning you, you. Grab it, otherwise it'll be gone. He's, he's gonna eat both yeah, of them. He's gonna give it to Quinn. I'll get one in a second. Well, I might eat another one. <laughs> Talk about some fighting, huh? What do you think about that? Are yeah, you, you why don't you ask these guys some questions, man? Uh, you met uh, you met Don, yeah, years ago, right? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, Where's the photo at? I saw the photo last night on my phone. Yeah, let's see it, so man. Pull it up. It. It's fucking funnier and shit. Do you see how young this guy? Looks like? I don't know, right? Oh. Uh, so, where did you guys meet? Uh, we met at the. Uh, hey, that's hey, he didn't know personal, okay? Yeah, the first time. No. Um, the, the Fight uh, Island. How do we put it like this? You see it? Yeah. Hey, Tony, can you get that on the screen somehow? Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, but here we'll just do. Yeah, it's just a. Are we moving to just blow up Don. <laughs> hey, baby. You see him? Who is that? That's him. Yeah, I know, right? So, I was like, so the young kid, though. Oh, you don't see me? You don't, don't even know. look like you. I got no, no yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, who is that dude? Yeah, no, I don't know. Like, I think you out angled me. Not even a whisker. I, I think you out angled me. I think Not you even a shoulder. whisker. Like, <laughs> definitely out angled me, that's for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I was there at the Arnold Classic with my mom um, at the expo. And we were waiting. I think I was waiting in line to meet Branch Warren and Johnny O. Jackson. And I just happened. My mom was with me. I was like, yo, hold my spot. <laughs> and uh, I had to hold my spot. And I just I, I, I just walked up to I saw him. Just, oh, he's just walking his ass around. And I just saw him. And I was like, oh, fuck, that's Don Fry. You know, and I just went up to him. And I was like, uh, you know, I, answered, I just I said, hey, you know, I'm, you know, hey, Don, how's it going? He's like, howdy, partner. <laughs> I said, "What the hell do you want, boy?" <laughs> yeah, that's more like it. Yeah, no, he didn't. He said he was nice back then. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you still owe me ten dollars for that photo too. <laughs> oh shit! Okay, Lou Ferrigno. <laughs> <laughs> he, he charges twenty five dollars. <laughs> He's pointing to Dan. <laughs> oh, Dan. <laughs> What's a what's a glossy uh, Dan Severn go, go, going for these days? An eight by ten glossy no, wallet size. <laughs> no, not the wallet size. The glossy no, eight by ten. No, ask the wallet. You'll get a gauge. <laughs> <laughs> what's a, what's that going for these days, Dan? Signed. Uh, you, you you said the price right there, twenty five. Nice, nice. You guys hear that? You guys can can uh, no, get a hold of Dan and, and he'll send you a glossy for twenty five bucks. <laughs> no, the thing was Shirt, is that the, optional. That's all. Well. Post, post it to headlight on top of that now. Come on. <laughs> the, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey, I also want to get the mail guy to come over and get the, uh, <laughs> you know, on the boat to get the mail. And swim oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, the funny, that, 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 that's, no that, the funny part about that is that the reason why I talk, say about Lou Frigno is everyone was, like, meeting greets and stuff and, like, taking pictures and signing pictures. They were just, like, doing it. If 
he was charging everyone like twenty five dollars to meet him and to take a picture. And if you did it with yourself, like he would still make charge you twenty five. But he was the only person doing it in the entire expo that year. Um, <coughs> that was in twenty thirteen. Obviously, Severn wasn't there then. You don't get an island by not fucking charging. Yeah. <laughs> I can't have a selfie for free. Shit. <laughs> Come on, man. And I tell you what, dude, we all need oh to take business. business. He is tight. <laughs> yeah. He is tight. Yeah, we're the ones that are screwing up here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Man, Dan, how much for a selfie on my own phone? <laughs> five dollars, a five dollars or ten dollars? Uh, I'm not even. We'll just you can throw Lou underneath the bus here right now. I'll, I'll let you do that. Oh okay. come on, Dan, is it five dollars or ten dollars? Let's just say yeah. Lou answer the question. Be a good company. Yeah, no, we'll, Mr. Severn, is it five dollars or ten dollars for a selfie on your own phone? Go, go a little further north, my friend. Whoa. Go a little further north. Hey, he's for got, a selfie with my own phone? He's got to get a boat for the island, man. Yeah. You, can't, you can't give it for a dollar, man. What are you going to do? On. You're going to get a, a paddle and a wooden board. You've seen the prices of lumber these days. He won't even open up his wallet for a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> it might fall out. That's yeah. why. You, you got to catch, <laughs> catch him from across the street with the Zoom. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He doesn't see you. He can smell it, though. Yeah, that's well, 50 cents. That's he's dog. like, I see you 350 <laughs> now, now, now that now i do i just just so you guys let me at least uh establish if you get your hands I up always set up a couple yourself. belts so that i have the i have a professional wrestling nwa title belt sitting next to the ufc title belt so i always tell people that the first title belt i ever won was a professional wrestling yes, title wrestling. belt the nwa for national wrestling alliance and then i'm the only guy to ever have a professional wrestling yeah. title belt carried out into my entourage. And that was for USC number five. And then uh, after winning the, the tournament in USC number five, I'm the first guy and still the only guy I know that was holding up both a professional wrestling title belt alongside a USC title belt. And I don't think anybody else can actually make that claim. So, you know, uh, probably what, 20 years before there ever was a Brock Lesnar that came on the scene, you know? Yeah. Dan Severn already did it. So it's kind of like going, yeah, I I don't charge like like what you're saying there, Nick, uh, just for a normal selfie. But if we're <laughs> standing behind those uh, two belts, oh, yes, we are. Yes, we are. That yeah, shit ain't yeah, free. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know, got to pay for the work he put that, into that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, um, I, was, I was halfway joking. But you got to think, though, if someone's, um, you know, you're getting bombarded and people coming to you all the dang time for stuff. That's like me. Um People message me all the time, ask me or call me, and the first thing they say is like, "Got a question? I already know what the hell it's about." Mm -hmm. They asking for dog advice, and and I've I've got to the point where I'm like, "You need to book a session with me or whatever," because I ain't got time to be sitting around answering. Here's my cash. Here's these. my cash app ha handle. Oh, they know how, it's on, it's on, it's on the <laughs> website. <laughs> Shit, but like, um, I ain't got time to answer a hundred thousand okay. questions to people. Just like you probably got time to be taking fifty thousand selfies a day with people for free. No, for free. That's what, well, they, that's what they want, free dog yeah. advice. That's yeah, what he, they want. That's what they want on Facebook. In, he can squeeze you in for, you know, $20. Hey, I just want to know if he has a military discount. <laughs> no. We're time. Veteran. Okay, Nick, a uh, question for you was, where did, no, where, did, where did Pipe come in? The Pipe. Okay, your last name's Webster. Where did the... Pipe come in. He, he smoked a lot of crack in high school. <laughs> yeah. But you know, I couldn't do this. Shit happens. I couldn't, do, I couldn't see her if I did that. Uh no, my my like, nickname's actually Pipes with an S. Um, but you know, I was just back in when I first got to Virginia, I met a, a buddy of mine, uh, still a good friend of mine, and um we were we were lifting, you know, we're big into working out, of course, and we were doing we were benching, and I used to bench press real close, right? Well when you bench press real close, it builds your triceps up. That's in your chest. So I used to bench real close, and I was benching like three fifteen, uh, like it, like you know, pretty pretty easily. But I was my my hands were this close, and so the the point of everything. My buddy's he's from Wales. He's very you know witty and off the off the off the cusp and real fat. He's like he's like you ain't nothing but pipes because like I was really lifting. All I was doing was working out my triceps really the whole time. And he's like Nikki pipes, and he started doing his little dance like that's, he's well, she's very very, that's very witty. The dude's great. He's a witty guy. He is a witty guy. I'm just saying, but very like witty. it was just funny. Listen, it's the kind of guy that listen goes to the bar. Listen to the story, and I'll go back. And I'll go back. He goes to the bar and he goes. We're standing there. This is a true story. 
standing there, and there's two girls down in the bar, right? One is the one in the front is pretty, and the one behind there is not so. <laughs> it's pretty. yours. Not so pretty. <laughs> no, 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 yep. Negative. <laughs> but the funny, the funny thing is, he he would say, "Hey," and he would yell down the bar. He'd be like, "Hey." And the girl would go like, the pretty girl, right? Because you know she thinks she's talking to her. He goes, hey. And she goes, who, me? And he's like, no, not you. Move. Her. <laughs> like that. He's like, huh, how you doing? Like that. Well, the funny thing is, that girl he would, that girl would be like, oh, my God. And the, the, the pretty girl would be mad, would be like, why didn't he want to talk to me? Right. Like, why did he say no? Because he was doing it on purpose. Right. Well, by the end of the night, that girl, that it was like, he's like, no, you move. I'm talking to her. Like that. That girl was like walking out the door him in the night. Yeah. So it was just so funny how he was thinking about stuff, but he didn't even do like that. Don't care about nothing. He just is crazy and will say anything at any given time. And um, gave me the nickname Pipes. And so it's, a lot of my friends think my uh, probably thought my last name was Pipes forever because I put you know it's like they call me Pipes. They probably thought that was my name. Um, until I probably told like, that's not my real last name, dude. Like, I thought you were Nick Pipes, like a lot of people do. But I just go by Pipes, and a lot of people don't even know my name's Nick, probably, because like, I've been going by Pipes for since 2003 or something. Well, it so. sounds like a pro wrestling name. Man. Hey, I don't know. We can use Nick like different Pipes. different entities. <laughs> yeah. Could be a porn star. Porn star, too. Nick yeah. Pipes. Good. Yes, hey? good. Yeah. I have a calling. Yes, you do. I got but a name. I got a name. Which pronoun would you use for that? Though? Pipes is good. <laughs> can I just be Pipes? <laughs> I, I identify as a glass of whiskey. I told you. <laughs> But um, yeah. So that's how that that name came about, pretty much. It's kind of not really a great story, I guess. But no, I don't no, know. it's kind of sad. Know. You know, it went down. You didn't like it. It went down. I don't care. From, um, I don't care if you liked it. Hey, I got a story. <laughs> <laughs> it went to shit from there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sounds like some of yours, probably. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> At least uh, you can finish the story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? what? Hey, what were you talking about? Who are you talking to? Uh, yeah. So it's a. Uh, I don't know, kind of stuck. That's weird. Sometimes things stick like nicknames. I don't know, the beast. How'd you be? How'd you become the beast? Let me throw it back on you. 